in the previous video, uh, we covered comparative statics of marketing. So now we can apply exactly the same tools to national income model, and we're going to start with close decline. Okay, let's do it the way we did it previously. So we're going to start uh, by finding equilibrium in the model. Okay, let's condense it to three equations. So we will have y equals c plus i0 plus g0. Let's just say that we have c equal to a plus b times y minus b times t, right? And the last equation we're going to have is t equals t times y. Okay, so what we do always in these situations, we put all the endogenous variables to the left, all the exogenous uh, 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 variables uh, to the right. So we've got that this is y minus c equals to i0 plus g0. Then we've got negative by plus c plus b t equals to a. And then we've got negative t y plus t equals to 0. And now we're ready to put it into matrix notation. Uh, so we've got that this is 1, negative b, negative t, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, b, 1. And we've got y, c, t, equal to i, 0, plus g, 0, a, and c. Okay, we start by calculating the determinant, which here is 1. Minus so plus b t, then we've got zero, 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 and minus b, which is equal to one minus b times one minus t. And just to refresh our memory, we remember that. B being marginal propensity to, to consume is between 0 and 1, and T being tax rate is always between 0 and 1. So, what do we get from this? If T is between 0 and 1, then 1 minus T must be between 0 and 1. We know that B is between 0 and 1. Which means that the outcome of the two must also be between 0 and 1. And finally, if I'm going to take a number that is between 0 and 1 and subtract it from 1, I'm going to get a number that is between 0 and 1. Okay, so we know that this is different than 0. What we can even say is that this outcome is all somewhere between 0 and 1. So definitely different than 0. So we know that the solutions exist. Okay, so now let's solve this model. But this time just for, just for income. Okay, so we replace the first... Okay. Um, we replace the first... Uh, uh, like first column of the matrix of coefficients and what do we get? i0 plus g0 a 0 negative 1 1 0 0 b 1 ok what do we get out of this? well look uh, I get that this is i0 plus g0 then 0 0 0 0 0 plus a. And just like we had this before, 
we get that equilibrium level of income in our closed economy is given by A plus I0 plus G0 divided by 1 minus B times 1 minus T. We also know that all those are positive. Here is between the number between 0 and 1, so definitely positive. This is the outcome we wanted, and this is the outcome, of course, we got last time. Okay, and today we're going to focus our attention solely on this, solely on income. So GDP of the country. Let's see what is happening in this economy if government wants to intervene somehow in order to influence GDP. So first, what government can do to influence the economy? Well, government decides about the level of spending, right? So let's see first what would happen if the government would decide to increase spending. What would happen to the equilibrium level of income? Now, all we need to do is to resort to what we've done previously, comparative static derivatives. So we need to calculate partial derivative of equilibrium level of income. to government spending. So look, we need to differentiate expression for uh, equilibrium level of income. But look, even though it might seem problematic, we can again see that this expression has a lot of parts that are not associated with government spending. Actually, government spending only appears over here. So I can write it as Okay, and 
to illustrate those consequences, let's use an example uh, with actual numbers. Look, just to see the point, let's just say the economy is given by the following uh, values. Let's just say that autonomous consumption, autonomous investment, and autonomous government spending are all equal to 100. Then yeah, let's just say that the marginal propensity to consume is relatively big, 0.9, and taxes are relatively low. You're just 10% of our income. Okay, let's calculate equilibrium level of income in this set. Okay, we know that the equilibrium level of income is given by this formula. So we add 100, 100, 100, we get 300, and we divide by 1 minus 0 0.9 times 1 minus 0 0.1, right? So this is 300 over 1 minus 0 0.9 times 0 0.9, which is 300 over 1 minus 0 0.81 and this is 300 over 0 0.19 which is approximately 1,579 okay so look given those parameters of the economy we were able to calculate equilibrium level of Cheap. Okay, now what would happen here if government spending would increase by 100? Right? What do we have? Look, now instead of 100 here, we would have 200. So in order to calculate GDP, in order to calculate GDP, uh, what we would have to do? Well, we would take now 400 on the top and we would divide it by 0 0.19, just as before, and we would get that this is approximately 21,005. Uh, I'm sorry, 2,105. Uh, okay, so we have actually calculated GDP in these two points. So let's see what has happened. Look, G government spending increased only by 100, but as we see, GDP equilibrium level of GDP, so GDP 1 minus GDP 0 in equilibrium is actually quite bigger. It increased by 526. How is that possible? Look, we see that actually aggregated expenditures are equal to the sum of consumption, investment, and government spending, and they are equal to income. And look, government spending increased only by 100. However, GDP increased by 526. Okay, this might seem problematic, but let's see one more thing. Look, we have actually investigated the impact of government spending on the equilibrium level of income. And we know that it is equal to this expression that we've got over here. Let's calculate the value of this expression. Okay, so we get that This derivative is equal to 1 over 1 minus b times 1 minus t, right? Now, if, let's, if we plug in the numbers, 
I hope you can see that those will be the same numbers over here. We will get that this is 1 over 0 0.19 or after the division approximately 5.26 Have we seen this number? Well, it's right here. Look, what this, this example is showing us is that actually change in the equilibrium level of income is equal to change uh, is equal to partial derivative of income with respect to government spending times change in the level of government spending. So in our case it was 5.26 times 100 and it gave us 526. Is it a uh, coincidence? Of course not. Look, this derivative is telling us what happens to equilibrium level of income if government spending increases by some small amount, right? One dollar. This is a linear model, so actually here we can talk about one for one changes. And look, what we get out of it is that if I'm going to take this number and now I'm going to multiply by this number changing the level of government spending, I'm going to get change in the level of income. This is why the expression we have just calculated is called multiplier. So, it tells us what will happen in this economy if government spending increases by one unit, right? By one dollar. However, if government spending increases by one dollar, and we know what happens to the economy, we can also use it in a case where it increases by 100, 200, 300 dollars. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the first important thing here to remember. We've got, what we've calculated is a multiplier. Now, this multiplier, look, it would be the same if we would calculate this derivative with respect to A, right, derivative would be the same, or I0. Which means that if any of the autonomous values increases by a unit, GDP increases by the value of multiplier, which we know is bigger than 1. But the interesting thing here is, not only to calculate, but how does it happen? Look, what we see from this example is that if government pumps into the economy $100 of additional spending, GDP of a country increases by $526, right? Amazing result. But how does this happen? And look, we can read actually all this from the structure of the model. Okay, and this one, this time we're going to use an example. Okay, we're not going to need this anymore and this. We need to remember this result, but I hope you know it by heart at this moment. Okay, and let's just keep in mind the values we used in our example. We've got the B is 0 0.9, so marginal propensity to consume. How much out of one additional dollar uh, household spent on consumption and tax rate is 0 0.1. Let's see what is going to happen in this economy. Okay, so look. How do we look at it? First, government 
increases spending by 100. This is the exogenous decision. We are not explaining why government did it, how the, how, 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 it did, how the government did it. All we know is that for some reason, government decided to spend additional 100. And look, from these equations that describe our economy, we will be actually able to read everything that happens. Okay, so look, if government spending is increasing by 100, what happens to aggregated expenditures? Well, this is easy, right? If government spending increases by 100, it means that aggregated expenditures are increasing by 100. Okay, so in this situation, what will happen to income? Well, income is equal to aggregated expenditures, right? So, if aggregated expenditures increase by 100, income must increase by 100 as well. Okay, now, if income increases by 100, what is now happening to disposable income, right? So income that people actually can spend. Look, when we receive income from, for our labor, let's just say, what is happening to it before it actually gets from our employer to us? Well, part of this income will go to taxation and the rest is going to be our disposable income. But how much are we giving to the government? We give T. So how much are we getting back? So how much are we actually receiving out of our income? One minus T. Look, in our example, tax rate is 0 0.1, which means 10%. This means the government receives 20% of your income, right? I'm sorry, 10% of your income. So how much are we receiving? Well, we're receiving 0 0.9. Okay, so we clearly see that in this case, we need to take 1 minus t, which is 0 0.9, multiply it by 100 and we will know by how much disposable income of customers has increased by 90 okay now if disposable income of households increases by 90 what happens to consumption okay <coughs> Let's see again now what is happening with the money we get as disposable income. Again, those can be uh, the, the money we get in form of the disposable income, so money after taxation. Households can either spend on consumption or savings. And look, we see that consumption is given as A plus B by D. Now, how much out of one additional dollar of disposable income household spend on consumption? This is told to us by marginal propensity to consume. Right? So this, oh, 
maybe I'm gonna use a different color. Let's call it B. No, let's put it B. So how much is going for savings? One minus B. Okay, in our case, this is 0 0.9, which means that we are saving 10% of our income and we spend 90% on consumption of disposable income. So what should we have over here? Look, here we should have 0 0.9 times disposable income, which is 0 0.9 times 100 or 0 0.81 times 100 or simply 81. Okay, so what has happened in our economy? Government increased spending by 100, aggregated expenditures increased by 100, income as a result increased by 100, and disposable income increased by 90 because 10% is going to the government in form of taxation. Then, consumption, out of this 90 that customers, uh, households receive, they decided to spend 90%, which is 81 on consumption. But look, consumption is part of aggregated expenditures. So when consumption increases by 81, Aggregated expenditures are increasing by 81. But then, if aggregated expenditures are increasing by 81, they are equal to income. So income must increase by 81. Okay, but if income increases by 81 what will happen to disposable income again we can calculate it. we are putting 10 percent to the government and 90 percent is left to us so this is going to be 0 0.9 times 80 uh, 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 times 80 81 uh, which uh, is equal to oh let, let, let me just um, okay I have a reason why I'm doing it so let me just write it as 0 0.81 times 100 and this is approximately uh, or even exactly 72.9 Okay, but now if disposable income increases by 72.9, what happens to consumption? Well, out of this, we spend 90% on consumption. So now we will have to multiply this by 0 0.9, but this will give us 0 0.81 times 0 0.81 times 100 which is 0 0.81 squared times 100, uh, which is equal to 65.61, right? Yes. Okay, so I hope at this moment you can guess what happens next. Well, because, um, because the consumption is part of aggregated expenditures, aggregated expenditures will now increase by 65.61, which means that income must increase by 65.61, which means that disposable income uh, will increase by 0 
9 okay, times uh, 65 times 61, uh, uh, which is something, doesn't matter. Definitely a small amount. Okay, let me just check. Disposable income now is going to be 15, 9. 0.040 and consumption will increase by 0 0.81 times uh, 65 61 but look this is the same as 0 0.81 to the power of 3 times 100 which uh, which is equal to 531441 uh, 5, and look again if consumption increases by this much aggregated expenditures are increasing by 50 3 times 1, 4, 4, 1 and income increases by 5, 3, 1, 4, 4, 1 and so forth Okay, so we saw what we actually went through in this simple exercise is a multiplier process. How does it work? Imagine it like this. Government decides to buy, to build a new road, right? And is willing to spend $100. Think about it at $100 billion or $100 million. So what happens? Look, this creates higher level of expenditures in the economy because government buys a road. But this road needs to be built, right? So government actually pays this amount of money to a company that is, that is building a road. And look, everyone in that company, in total, when government pays for the road, the company pays to capital owners, the company pays to workers, and management gets the profits, right? But they are all members of households, right? So this 100 that was earned by this company is also an income of everyone that works in this company. So before they receive this 100 that they made, those households, so owners of capitals, owners of labor, and owners of the company need to pay taxes, right? They pay 10% to the government in taxation and 90% stays for their disposable income. So out of this 100, now they have 90 to spend. And look, what they will do with this disposable income now is that they will spend part of this disposable income on consumption. In our case, 90%. And look, if they are going to spend this money on consumption, it means that they will go to somebody else's business yeah, and they will buy something, they will buy food, uh, they will pay their rent, uh, they will buy some stuff they need. And look, as a result of this spending, their additional spending, some other company is going to make this additional $81. And look, now, people from this company who have made this, uh, this uh, $81 are going to pay part of in taxes and then they're going to spend 
part of this income on consumption. And when they spend this on consumption, they're actually buying goods and services from somebody else, right? They, they purchase in another store things that were produced by a different company. <coughs> but by doing so, they are allowing people from the different company to make 65. <coughs> I'm sorry, 161. And look, again, when those people are making this 65.61, they're gonna pay part to the government in the form of taxes. And then they're going to save part of it and they're, they're going to spend part of it increasing consumption by another 53 and because of that they're spending this money in yet another business they are creating this opportunity for another business to uh, make money and look it doesn't end with this then people from this business gonna pay part of their, uh, this is gonna be their income, they're gonna pay part of it in taxes to the government, they're gonna save some part of it, and they're, they're gonna spend on yet another business. So look, what is happening over here is that by this increase in government spending, government uh, opened a chain of causality. This chain of causality goes like this. When somebody wants to spend money, they need to go to somebody's business. And when they do it, when they spend money in this business, people from this business make money. This is their income. They're gonna pay part of the, part of this income will go to the government in form of taxation. Part of it, they will save, However, they will spend some of this money and they will create an opportunity for yet another business to make money. Then those people, when these are making money, they are paying part of it in the form of taxation, they save part and they spend another part creating another opportunity from, uh, for another business to make money, right? And so forth, and so forth, and so forth. So this chain of causality that you see over here, that by spending it on somebody's business, money, and somebody, on somebody's goods and services, we are allowing them to make money, and we are allowing them to spend money on somebody else's business. And th those people, in turn, are spending money on yet somebody else's business. This is how multiplier mechanism works. Basically, by inducing some amount of money into the economy, by putting this money into the economy, we are opening a chain of events in which some people are getting money as their income, and then they take this income, then spend on somebody else's business through consumption, and this creates this effect that we saw over here. That even though government spent originally only 100 on goods and services, GDP is rising by 526 times. Which means that each dollar that you saw over here uh, spent by the government is multiplied in the economy. This is why we call this multiplier. In our economy, this multiplier uh, is equal to 5.26, which means that each dollar government spends, additional dollar government spends, turns into $5.26 in the economy. Okay, why do we get this specific uh, this specific number. Actually, it, it, it can be derived quite easily. 
Let's notice a couple of things. Look, each consecutive increase in income over here is smaller and smaller and smaller. Why is that? Look, because originally we created a burden to make $100. Part of it went to the government. Part of it cost in household saved. So they then had only 81 to spend. And then out of this 81, people needed to pay some to the government, some saved, and less was left for spending. And so you see, in each consecutive rounds, because this is like, you need to imagine it like it goes to infinity. But each next, uh, each next installment over here is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, now, the key thing here to getting uh, the multiplier is just noticing one simple thing uh, that I was doing with you over there, right? The first income increased by 100. Then income increased by 81. How did we get like, this 81? It was 0 0.81, right? 0 0.9 that goes to the government, right? And 0 0.9 uh, because 0 0.9 because 0 0.1 went to the government in taxes times 0 0.9 because 0 0.1 customers saved, right? And it was times this original 100, which gives us 81. Okay, so look, then this happens again. Out of this 81, 0 0.9 customers receive as disposable income because 0 0.1 goes to the to taxation. And out of this money, they spend 90%, which means that again, next, so third increase in income will be 0 0.81 square, right? Times 100, which is uh, uh, which is which is 65.61. Okay, and look, so you can easily guess that in the next case we will have 0 0.81 to the power of 3 times 100, which is equal to 53.1441. And look, each next outcome that we're going to have here is going to be based on a smaller number because 10% goes to the government and out of it 10% is being saved. So the next increase would be 0 0.81 to the power of 4 times 100 uh, times 100 uh, okay, which is 43 Zero, four, six, seven, two, one. Okay, and look, I hope you can imagine that each time, each next increase in income will have this form. So next one would have 0 0.81 to the power of 6 times 100. And look, they go on like this forever until basically this number is getting closer and closer to zero. But look, we clearly see that this gets to zero. Okay, let's let's for a second let t denote time. What do I mean by that? It's like look, if I would like to calculate a limit of an expression like uh, with t approaching infinity of an expression like k times, let's just say, 100 equals to. Look, uh, uh, k to the power of t, right? Because what do we have here? Here, we also have 0 0.81, right? Uh, just 
to the power of zero. Then one, then two, then three, then four, y. Okay, and look, if t, if the number if k is a number between zero and one, also we would get the same outcome if k would be between negative one and zero, but this doesn't matter for us, right? Uh, what, would, what would happen? Look, this expression stays the same, but this, with t going bigger, this becomes smaller, right? It's like if you have 0 0.1 times it to the power of 1 is 0 0.1. To the power of 2, it's 0 0.01. Then to the power of 3 is 0 0.001. So we get a number that is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So, we see clearly that in this case, limit is zero. But this has a broader consequences. Because look, if I would take a sum going, uh, uh, going from zero to infinity, going from zero to infinity, out of the expression like kt, I would get that this is equal to 1 over 1 minus k. This is the result you've probably seen uh, in your uh, high school mathematics class. This is a formula uh, uh, for the sum of an infinite uh, of an infinite series, but what very specific series where we have k that is between 0 and 1. And look, does this remind us something? Okay, look, let's apply our numbers. Our k is 0 0.81, right? So we get that this is 1 over zero, uh, 1 minus 0 0.81 1 over 0 0.19 God, we saw this somewhere, right? Okay, now, if I'm going to uh, approach it differently What are the components of this? Well, 0 0.9 is B, right? So this is the part of income cost of household spending consumption And then we multiply it by 1 minus t. This is the part of income that is not going to taxation. If I'm going to substitute over here, what am I getting? This is the formula for multiplying. Look, basically, if we would add up all those increases in income, Together, we would got expression like this, right? Simply, instead of 1, we would have 100 over here. And this, in a nutshell, is how the multiplier process works uh, in the economy. We know that by one installment of additional spending, we can create a chain of causality, a chain of events that will result in expanding the GDP by the force of I'm spending money on your business and yet you're spending money that you made as an income on yet somebody else's business. So look, this is how we get multiplier process. This is how we basically derive it. And this is how it works. I don't know what else I can say to it. We will be discussing this in, in a, from a different, non-mathematical perspective during your macroeconomics class, but I hope with this you can understand the basic idea that we've got behind uh, the multiplier mechanism in the economy. Okay, so now, We've uh, kind of talked to death 
uh, how uh, government can influence the economy by increasing uh, government spend. But look, even in the simple model, there is a second way in which government can influence the economy. The second way is through taxation. So let's figure out now what happens to equilibrium level of income when government increases taxation. Okay, again, in order to assess it, we need to calculate comparative study derivative of equilibrium GDP, this time with respect to taxation. Okay, so let's do it. It's not that complicated. We need to differentiate this one, this expression. So A plus I0 plus G0 over 1 minus B times 1 minus T. Okay, and look, again, we need to use the quotient rule, right? Because T appears over here. So let's see how much we're going to have. Okay, so in the bottom, we're just going to have 1 minus B, 1 minus T squared. Then, derivative of, the, of this expression, which is 0, times the second expression. So this is gone. So we've got just minus. Now, this expression, which gives us A plus I0 plus G0, and times derivative of that with respect to T. And look, first, we could get that if we would multiply it, we would get that this is 1 minus B plus BT, right? So the derivative of B on T is just B over here, and this is our outcome. Okay, so let's see, let's assess now the sign. We know that this is between 0 and 1, take it to the power of 2 is positive, B is positive between 0 and 1, these are all positive. We can be 100% sure that this expression is negative because it has a minus up from Okay, so what does this mean? Well, this means that the higher the tax rate, the lower uh, the equilibrium level of income, uh, other things being equal. Okay, let's see how it, uh, uh, how it works. Okay, before, when we used an example, we started like this. Okay, it was 100 for each. We calculated that uh, we had that uh, B is equal to 0 0.9 and T is equal to 0 0.1. In this case, GDP was equal to 300 over 0 0.19, just substituting to the formula, and it was equal to 1,570 now. Okay. Now, let's change this one thing. Let's just say the taxes are rising to 0 0.4. Quite a lot. 40%. What will happen to the income in our economy? Okay, so dollars stays the same, so we will still have 300. But now look, we, here we've got 1 minus b times 1 minus t, right? So let's calculate how much is it. We've got now 300. Uh, we've got now 300. We've got 1 times 0 0.9, and t minus 1 is 0 0.6. Now, 300, now we've got over 1 minus uh, 0 uh, 0.54 uh, 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 
yeah, which gives us 300 over 0.46. This, uh, and, and this is equal to, uh, and, and, I mean, uh, uh, 300 uh, 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 this is equal to uh, 6 uh, approximately uh, 652 ok we clearly see that something is very very different in this economy why has this happened? Look, we clearly see that the level, uh, we clearly see uh, uh, that the uh, level of income has dropped. But why has this happened? Let's just look an expression for multiplier. First, let's see what is the multiplier in this economy, right? Multiplier at point zero, so it's 1 over 1 minus b times 1 minus t so in this case this is zero, 1 over 0 0.19 and uh, it was equal to uh, uh, it was equal to approximately 5.26 now let's check multiplier for this economy Multiplier in this economy is given by the same formula, of course. However, it is equal to 1 or divided by 0 0.46, uh, which is approximately uh, 2.17. Maybe we've got our culprit. We clearly see now that higher taxes are definitely associated with lower income and they are also associated with a lower value of the multiplier. How does it play? Look, when you think about it for a second, it should be obvious. Look, if we talk about the multiplier process, we are putting a break to it by increasing tax increasing taxes. Look, if I increase taxes to 40%, it means that now people have got only 60% on spending. So look, because of that, this 100, instead of 90 going to the household, 60 is going to the household. So households will be spending 90% out of 60 not uh, 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 not ninety dollars, and because of that, because government is taking out more money of the out of the economy, because our income is more taxed, customers spend less money. They create less opportunities for other people to make money, and because of that, uh, uh, and because of that. Uh, and because of that, multiplier mechanism uh, does not work as efficiently as here and because of that we have lower income. So look, we see that the increase in government's uh, in, in the tax rate will lower the GDP but it's done through the multiplier effect. So it means that the value of the multiplier is going down. And look, using the same uh, reasoning, we can also examine the impact of marginal propensity to consume on income, right? It should have exactly the same effect, right? <coughs> Uh, maybe not exactly, but very similar, right? So, if I now want to assess impact of NPC on equilibrium level of income, I just calculate partial derivative of income with respect to NPC, and what am I getting? 
this is uh, uh okay again we need to use the portion rule we do it for the uh for our expression over there so we got that this is uh one minus t and uh, one minus b times one minus t square again expression on the top doesn't have b so first part is one which is put minus a plus i0 plus g0 and times derivative uh, 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 times derivative uh, 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 times derivative uh, on b and what do we get? Uh, uh, get out of it that this is 1 minus t right and minus so minus turns into a plus. Okay, so from that example, we clearly see that the higher the MPC, the higher is the value uh, of equilibrium level of income. And look, why is this happening? Look, here the situation is very simple. If Customers spend more of their consumption of their disposable income on consumption, they actually create more opportunities for other uh, for others to make money, and then those people spend more by creating more opportunities to get other people to make money. So in this case, we see that actually. Uh, uh, that actually the higher is the portion of disposable income spent on consumption, the higher are the opportunities of the uh, businesses in the economy to make money, and the higher is the resulting level, equilibrium level of income. But as you see, it all goes through uh, the multiplier mechanism. Where imagine that now we would cut down B to 0.5, you would see that actually the uh, value of the multiplier is very, uh, 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 very low. Okay, before we finish on this, let me just pose one more question. Is it good to have a very big value of multiplier in the economy? Well, the thing is that this is not an easy question to answer. Let me give you an example. Imagine there are two economies. Economy number one. And in economy number one, the value of the multiplier is 10. Okay? And we've got economy number two. Where the value of multiplier is just 2. Okay, let's just say that except for that they are identical. And in the first economy, level of investment has increased by 100. So, what has happened to the equilibrium level of income in this economy? We can easily calculate it. This is partial derivative of equilibrium level of income with respect to investment, which is of course the same as for government spending and autonomous consumption, right? So this is our multiplier, 10 times 100. And we see the GDP in this country in economy 1 increased by 1. Does. What happens in the second economy? If here investment increases by 100, then GDP also increasing by the value of multiplier increases by 100, but multiplier is just 2, GDP increases by one, uh, 200. Well, 
in this case, definitely economy one is winning. But what if investment dropped in economy one and in economy two? What would happen here? Well, here, GDP would decline by 100, right? While here, well, by 1,000, I'm sorry. While here, GDP would decline by 200. So look, on one hand, it is tempting to have the high value of multiplier because government expenditure, fiscal policy becomes very effective in a way that it's easy to, for the multiplier process to increase GDP. However, if something goes bad, it goes south really, really fast. So it creates, uh, it, it, it creates this threat of economy uh, 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 de declining and get going under very, very fast. And look, we said that taxes, increased taxes, result in lower value of multiplier. Right? So what we get out of it is that taxes, tax rate is actually in, uh, leading to lower value of multiplier. And this is why tax rate is called in macroeconomics automatic stabilizer. Simply because it reduces the volatility of GDP by declining the value of the multiplier. Okay, I think this is it about the uh, comparative static in national income model. Uh, in the next video, we're going to move to open economy and we're going to see how the results we've obtained here changed uh, uh, due to exports and imports. Thank you for your attention.